What's up everybody, Lindsay Universe here, and we got us a good review today, oh boy howdy, do we have a DC Titans that come to us from Netflix, and yes, <clears throat> this series really had me worried at first, but boy, when it came here, oh my god, was I so happy. So let me explain why this series made me worry and where I began not to worry about this series anymore. As for being a big Teen Titans fanboy growing up with the cartoon series with the comic books, I was a little bit afraid that this series from Netflix would have become something that's not very inspired by the comics itself. I thought it was going to be... Um, I guess you could say almost feel like a joke, like a parody of this favorite team of mine, and it wouldn't become something that I, I would cherish near and dear to my heart. I thought that this series would become destroyed, especially seeing some of the images from some of the cast originally through Twitter and through my personal Facebook and through Google and YouTube. I said, you know what? I didn't want nothing to do with this series. I'm out. I don't want to see it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't even want to review it. But then, something happened. I started hearing a lot of people saying that this series, DC Titans, was amazing, that it was beyond expectations, that it was really, really damn good. And I remember picking on the series way back in the day. And as my English teacher would always tell me, and as, um, my mother and father would have told me back in the day too, I can't judge a book by its cover. And you know, that's was something that I did so quickly with this series. And then I told myself one day, I said, you know what? I'm going to review this series. So that's when I said to myself, I'm going to pick up this series. That's what my sister did. But I'm going to get DC Titans, I'm going to give it a fair shot, and I'm going to see what this is all about, and, oh boy howdy, prepare yourself for a long review, you might well pause the video right now, get yourself some popcorn and soda, or get yourself some snacks, because you might be here for a while, as I try to explain this through each and every episode, and in fact, just for a little reminder, and a little helper for myself, there is a DVD discussion thing on this. So we're going to just go through episode through episode, and we are just going to tackle this as I can. So, goodness me. When the series first began, we are introduced to Raven. She's going through this hallucination. And she realizes that she's inside of a circus. There is no reason to really why she was in a circus to begin with. And as dark as it is, she goes back to the past when Dick Grayson's parents died. Uh, this has become very relevant that probably that she needs to go and talk to Robin, aka Dick Grayson, in this universe. Now, in this universe, um, this is like basically a multiverse, so to speak. And in this universe, Batman snapped. Now, I have no idea where this idea came from, and one of the creative geniuses behind this series is Joff Johns himself. The man behind the Titans himself, Joff Johns, is in here, and my god, man, you are a genius. If you're watching this video, you are a creative, talented individual for giving up some of the greatest episodes of this series. My god, big love to Joff Johns. Big heart to Joff Johns. Big hearts. So he really put it all in his series. So Raven is in a home where her mother is pretty much insane, so to speak, or her stepmother. Um, she had crosses just all over her door. And I'm like, what in the hell is this? What are you doing? And it turns out that there is a reason why all these crosses are hanging on the poor raven door. It is because that she is now becoming understood that she has a dark power within her. 
it sort of feels like X-Men, an example. If you remember, one of the sayings from X-Men is that Professor Xavier always said that when a mutant, usually a mutant will get their mutant powers around the age of eight, of 13 to 12 when they start, you know, maturing. And uh, Raven, I think, in the series is like six. She's the youngest of the group, not to be spoiled. I think she's like 16, 15 uh, in the series. And she is really great. The actress who plays Raven really got into her role. I really believe the performances that she would bring to the table when her mother was telling her that you're going insane, that you're becoming crazy, it's about to stay home with mommy. I got some real creep vibes from that. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's not what I want to see happen. But I was so grateful to see it happen. And Raven dark form, it is creepy. It is. Uh, you have Raven with no eyes and like black tears coming down here like, You will be mine. It's like... <laughs> I remember getting a few jump scared from the series. There's not much, but there are a few. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that happened. Like, okay. I am now officially creeped out by you, Titans. <laughs> so... Robin is a detective in the series, which is very reminiscent to his uh, Dick Grayson comics. I think it's just called like Detective Grayson or Grayson or Agent Grayson or something like that. And um, instead of being Nightwing, he is still Robin. And I find that because maybe that's going towards where his first appearance with the Titans, where he was Robin for that time period, and he is trying to really help Batman in a way recover all the crime that he had lost since he snapped. I will get to that in a moment, how Batman really snapped and whatnot. Uh, but Robin takes on his persona, and in this version, Robin is dark, and he kills people. He will break bones, make you bleed. He will, uh, at times, capacitate them. He had shurikens, uh, the are shurikens that he always carries, and one gets stuck in a fiend's hand, and I'm like, oh, like, damn, Robin gone, ape shit. And he is doing this because he, I guess that he's trying to prove himself to Batman in a way, or he's trying to prove that Gotham still needs a hero and Batman is too basically chicken shit to do anything about it. So he looks at girls, don't get your mind out of the gutter, who've been abused in an abusive relationship, with an abusive household, and he goes and have these girls. So he's doing something good, but at the same time, breaking these guys' bones and beating them to choice, that's a little bit extreme. So we are also introduced to Beast Boy, and my god. Um, I do have to nitpick with Beast Boy just a little bit here, but hear me out. Uh, we do are uh, inter uh, introduced to Beast Boy, and he is my favorite Titan of all, and in this m series, he, again, is one of my favorite Titans. Uh, the actor who reprises Beast Boy really does it all. He is smart ass, the white Beast Boy. He is, um, he's smart ass, he's a joker, he's a comedian. He is just really all out there, and my god, his delivery is just so worth it in this series and he alone really made it worthwhile for me but I was a little bit afraid of it but when I gave it a shot I really really loved it and there was a reason why Beast Boy doesn't have his green skin in this version which I was pretty worried about because I was like they can't just CGI his skin green for the entire series and whatnot um there is a reason why Beast Boy is not green skin and I was like Oh, you know, that makes so much sense compared to where he was originally. And I was like, okay, I can, okay, I'm watching this work. You know, I'm watching this, you know, become full circle. The only thing I don't like about it is that um, Beast Boy only had one beast transformation, and that is the tiger with Geoff John's head on the famous, ti on the famous uh, cover of Titan number one that he did. And that's understandable, but... I really was hoping to see like him transform into a bear, a wolf, an eagle, you know, any, a, anything else but the tiger. The tiger was really cool, but then after a while I'm like, Joff, is there anything different that you want to pull on a screen? And that never happened. Now, Starfire. I know what everybody's going to say. Starfire is not the she used to be. Nah. I scream. 
I love the performance of Dogfire. It took me a while to really comprehend what was going on, and then I had to remember Starfire's backstory. That they didn't much really very much play on here, um, not for season one anyways, but the actress who plays, who plays Corey does very, very well. Um, she suffers amnesia, which is kind of something that I think is like a cheap shot, but it does play off in the end. And there is a reason why she does come to Earth, there is a reason why she is there. And what's funny is that in this series she played off like a prostitute. And that is very much reminiscent to her character backstory because if you're a fan of Starfire or if you've seen one of my older videos about why I thought like she was so attractive and everything, it's because originally she was an alien sex slave. So basically saying that Starfire, that for Starfire, the only thing that she knows how to do is sell her body to somebody who, really, who you know, would want it, so to speak. But god damn it, this woman is not badass, okay? Like, she up straight kills people, she had no idea what she's doing, she had no idea why she is there, but she would straight up kill the motherfucker if they ever try to fuck with her the wrong way. And she just becomes one of my favorite characters. In the development of this, so as I so after that happens, Raven and Robin meet up, and Raven tries to tell Robin there is a reason why you and I need each other, and Robin said, no, 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 I'm not gonna be a babysitter. There is no need for you to be here. And then when he realizes how special that Raven is and how much that people want to kill her, he's like. Okay, I'm gonna baby. He's like, okay, I'm gonna babysit you now. <laughs> You're my. We're gonna be babysitters. So after that, they are introduced to other characters who actually play a role on the Teen Titans, especially Hawk and Dub. Now, for those of you that don't know, Hawk and Dub were originally part of the 70s Titans. Uh, they had not the 60s, 70s Titans. They had nothing to do with the 80s team except for a few mild appearances. Uh, but in the original team, Hawk and Dub were part of the Teen Titans. Here, it is not. Uh, Don and Hank, instead it is um, Dawn and Hank. Now, if you remember, Dawn is the love interest of Hank, and she later on becomes Dove after um, Don is killed. So, Hank and Dawn become Hawk and Dove. They talk about the origin of Hawk and Dove. They talk about the relationship and love interest. Now, what you guys are probably saying, you're like, oh my god, he is not mentioning it. And he, yeah, I'm gonna mention it. The, the actress that plays Dawn is the same actress that plays Khaleesi on Game of Thrones. I recognized it right off the bat, and I was just sitting there kind of giddy because I've seen Game of Thrones before this. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I was really, very happy. And the relationship that they explain with Hawk and Dove is really great. You really need to pay attention to it. They explain everything. They explain that Dove used to have a little thing for Robin Boy. Ooh, Robin, you smooth little birdie. Tweet, tweet, rockin' Robin. He was rockin' all right in that tree. <laughs> I nailed it. I, I'm sorry, I won't do it anymore. Um, but then afterwards, Beast Boy manages to basically have Raven. She, not in that way, but um, he finds her and Raven is like, Oh shit, it's a tiger! And then he transforms. He's like, No, 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 I'm... And here's the funny thing with Beast Boy. In this series, he had to strip naked every time he transforms. <laughs> and it's so hilarious. Because when he's sitting there with, with Raven, he's like, Ah, I'm... <laughs> he just moved off screen like, no, <laughs> it, it's hilarious at best, and um, it becomes really famous, uh, really famous of him to do this in the series, and everybody always cried jokes about him about it, um, but he does take Raven to his household, this is this Doom Patrol, now, I was worried about this too, because I remember the Doom Patrol, you know, back in the day, and I'm, and I'm like, Okay, this this could go either really horribly or really, really good. It went really, really good. The 
performances for the Doom Patrol become really, really impressive. Brandon Frazier as Negative Man was a blast, and yes, I could tell it was, it was Brandon Frazier. You have Robot Man, you had Elastic, you had, um, you had Rita, I can't remember her, her code name. You had Miles Calder, Dr. Calder. And it is a really fantastic performance. Uh, Dr. Calder wanted to perform on Raven. But what was so cute and romantic in this is that they actually played the romance, the relationship between Raven and Beast Boy. And I was like, they had my favorite comic book relationship going. I was so happy. I was like, oh, I couldn't resist. I was like, hearts, hearts all around. Um, but the Doom Patrol do become a really good big impact on it, and I think that since his performance, that's when they spawned off their own Netflix series, new, no, I don't have it. Um, I wish to get it at some point and see how the Doom Patrol really compared to DC Titans. Uh, but later on, they all become together, they all become together, they all form the Titans. There is a very steamy romance scene with the Rock and Robin and Starfire, wink, wink. Um, I mean, these two just say frick it all, and they just made love like a couple of horny dogs. That's all I'm saying. They don't show nothing, but you can just tell it's like, okay, she's getting something good in there. So after this happens, a lot of things start breaking down for the team. Uh, Jason Todd comes into play. It is not the older Red Hood Jason Todd, it is the Robin Jason Todd. And they show how brutal that Jason Todd can be because he killed some police officers. And Robin is like, no, 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 what are you doing? You're supposed to be a Robin. And he's like, I'm just having a little bit of fun snaps. Like the police officer's neck and I was like, oh, damn. Because if anybody is a fan of Batman, they would know that well, that Jason Todd is just the most brutal person in the entire Batman family, right next to Damien. Um, so then what happens is that Robin gets kidnapped by a team who really, really want to basically dissect Raven. They want to find out where her powers come from. They want to find out everything that she is, and Robin goes through his entire lifespan where he was a child, when he met Batman, when he first became Robin, his first mission, and it really becomes his episode there. And then further down more, they really focus on all the other Titans individually. They even bring it back into an episode and they do explain that, once again, Rock and Robin! Rock and Robin! Had a little fling with Donna Troy, and I'm like, okay, now it's time to play the game of who didn't Robin fuck in this specific specificity? Because so far we have that he fucked Darkfire, that he fucked D Dub, and that he fucked Donna. Who didn't dick dick? <laughs> you gotta give me that one. Okay. But yeah, that is actually what happened. Then they do talk about the relationship again with Hawk and Dub in another episode, and they kind of be really explain that, like, Hawk is just really jealous of Robin because Robin got into her pants before he did. I guess it was a thing that was supposed to happen. Um, I'm not putting it mildly, that kind of is what happens, and he is upset that these two didn't make love back before he even was introduced to Dove. So he thinks that, you know, that Dove still loves him, and something dramatic happened to Dove. She gets thrown off a building and still survives. That is just the obscurity of what this series does and will become in the advancement. Um, there was a lot of death and brutal scenes that happened in this. And at the end of this series, we actually get Trigon in this, yes we do get the full and extent of Trigon. But, some people will be upset about who Trigon is, or what he is, essentially, because you're probably thinking it, it, it's gonna be just a gigantic demon with three eyes and the horns and the red skin and a deep, gravelly voice. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, for those of you who haven't seen this series. Um... 
don't get your hopes up too much. But the series will make you scream to the top of your lungs like I did and go, what happened? Because you do not know what happened. You're just sitting there, just sitting there with a look on your face going, is, is that it? Is that it? And you oh god, that happened. And you're just sitting there going, well, is that it? Is that it? And no, that is not it. That is not it at all. And I'm going to try to prevent that from happening again. So, no, that is not it. Because there is still a season two where they introduced even more Titans, where they introduced even more story, and where they introduced even more stuff. So this series is very dark. It's depressing. It has romances. It had the consequences of being a hero. It has the consequences of being the right person at the right time. It has the consequences of being there for the right person at the right time. And it really played on all the titans. And it is slow. I will guarantee. I will give you that. This series is very, very slow. It takes up until towards the ending where you learn everything about these characters and then you sit there and go, oh, that's why such and such happened. Except for Beast Boy, he gets the quickest explanation in the Doom Patrol episode, um, but everybody else, it takes slow and time for them to build up into what is going on and why Raven is so important. And when you realize why she's so important, you actually are like, Oh, like, I get it now. Um, if you want a quick explanation, I can kind of give it to you is that Raven, I'm not going to really try to spoil it, but it's like Raven is basically the destroyer of the world, per se. Uh, I just can't give you any really well details of how this happens because I don't know how it happens. Uh, in the comics, it was pretty well explained how she becomes the destroyer of the world in the in the series, it's not really explained how she becomes the destroyer of the world. Josh Johns, again, does a great job. He writes most of the episodes in this, and it really shows, and he really shines through these episodes just like he did in the comics. Uh, I have to say, watch this series. If you are a fan of comics, and if you have watched the Teen Titans uh, animated series back in the day, not Teen Titans Go, the original, and you know how dark and depressing it can be, this one kicks it right in the balls and says, I'm here now, bitch. Get in the corner. Because this series has a lot going for it. And no, it did not have the terrifying ending that Teen Titans, the original series, had. It should have had a better ending. Don't you agree? Um, but this one does have a pretty much of a what in the hell happened moment. So, please check out Titans. I can't believe I talked this long about this series, but I wanted to try to give it a more in-depth look. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to check out my gameplay channel, Lazy Arcade. And, wow, that was a mouthful. And you guys can check out some more of my other reviews. Please check out DC Titans. I will check out Season 2 when I can get to it. I even want to check out Season 2 of Stranger Things. Uh, so maybe in the future, you guys can see them as videos. If you guys want to see me talk about any of your favorite TV shows, uh, movies, comics, franchises, anything, let me know in the comment section down below. And I promise that I will get to it in the future. Just don't rush me because I have a lot of other ideas planned. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time in the next lazy episode. See you then.